In this video, I want to show you how you can use the model constraint option in M plus based on a simple example. Here I have a longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis model with two time points. And one question that we might have in such a model could be, are there any mean differences across time? So did a construct change with regard to its mean? And so what I can do in a longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis model like this, first of all, I can test whether there's measurement equivalence across time. And then if we have at least strong measurement equivalence, which means equal loadings and equal intercepts across time, then I can meaningfully uh, estimate and compare the means of the latent variables at those two time points. And so that's what I'm doing here. So here I have a model with actually strict factorial invariance across time. So I have equal loadings and I have also the intercept set equal and the error variance is set equal and this model fits well. So therefore I can meaningfully compare those latent means that I'm estimating here for those two factors tau one and tau two. And now you can see that in this input file, I label the two means as M1 and M2 by putting these labels here in parentheses. And now what I can do is I can define the mean difference using model constraint as a new parameter. And so when we look at that model constraint command here at the bottom, you can see that first of all, I included the new sub command and then in parentheses, I defined diff as a new parameter. So diff is a label that I chose. And then I have to define what diff is. And so then I defined diff as the difference m2 minus m1. You can use any kind of mathematical operation or pretty much any kind of mathematical operation in model constraint when you define new parameters. The only thing so say that you have to do is you have to label the parameters that you're using to define new parameters in your model statement. So anything that you define in model constraint must be based on parameters that are in the model and those parameters have to be labeled. And then you can use these labels in model constraint to define new parameters such as for example, the mean difference. Now, why is this potentially interesting to do? It's interesting to do because not only will M plus calculate the difference between those two factor means, which you could obviously do by hand, but M plus will also give you a standard error for that mean difference as a new parameter. And it'll give you a Z statistic and a P value so that you can test whether this newly defined parameter is significantly different from zero. And that's an advantage because that would not be so easy to do by hand to calculate that standard error for this new parameter. And so it shows you this is very flexible. You can define all kinds of new parameters based on existing parameters with this model constraint option. And then you can you get a standard error for those parameters and you can test them for significance or you can also place constraints on these parameters. So for example, we could then if we had another mean difference or some other parameter, we could set them equal or something like that to test whether the mean change is the same for different time points or something like that. So you can then in model constraint also place additional constraints on parameters. Another useful feature of model constraint is that you can impose nonlinear constraints on parameters as well that are not just simple equality constraints. Equality constraints can just simply be put on parameters by giving them the same label like I did here in the model statement to impose measurement equivalence across time. But sometimes you have constraints that are more complex where you um, cannot simply set parameters equal, but where one parameter is a complex function of some other parameters. And then those constraints can also be implemented very easily using the model constraint option. Now let's take a look at what we get for this new mean difference parameter that I defined here where you can find that in the output. When we click run. We obviously get the same model fit that we would get for a model without this parameter because we didn't place any constraints here. We only defined this parameter as a new parameter and it's a perfect function of other parameters. So that doesn't change the implied model structure. So you would get the same model fit without this newly defined parameter. The only thing that is different here is that 
we get this mean difference now under new additional parameters in the unstandardized solution. So this is the mean difference, 0 0.025 mean time 2 minus, minus mean time 1. And so you can see that that's correct by looking at the estimated means. You can see the time 2 mean is slightly higher than the time 1 mean, and so that difference is therefore positive. And that's given here. It's a very small mean difference and you can see it has a large standard error. And so the Z statistic is near zero and the p-value is near one, showing that this parameter is not significantly different from zero. So that would indicate that there was no significant mean change here across time. And that's something that you could not have seen from these means easily, you could have seen that they're not very different, but there's not directly a significance test for the difference here. But this newly defined parameter allows us to test the difference for significance. So it's kind of like a paired samples t-test for latent variables, so to say, in this example. And of course, it's a very simple example where you could also find out about that in different ways, but it shows you how the model constraint option works in principle for defining new parameters, and it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Now, another thing that I want to show you is also how you can impose constraints on newly defined parameters in M plus using model constraints. So now we have to find our difference here, and so now we could um, put a constraint on that difference. For example, we could say zero equals diff semicolon, and then that means now we're setting the difference to zero, and then the model includes that constraint that the means are equal between the two time modes. Now, obviously, this is very complicated. You could just simply give the means here the same label, and then you would have the same constraint. So in this case, it's not necessary to use model constraint if you wanted to set those means equal across time. You could just simply give a single label here in parentheses in the model statement, but it shows you how it works in model constraint. If you had com more complex constraints, then, then that would work like this to say zero equals and then this new parameter or a set of new parameters. And then what happens when we run this modified input is then we have an additional constraint. So then our test of model fit has one more degrees of freedom. Previously we had 15 degrees of freedom, now we have 16 because now we're setting the means equal across time with this constraint. You can see the model fit is still very good. So that's, that constraint isn't rejected. It doesn't surprise us because we, because we saw already that the means were not significantly different. The difference that we defined in model constraint was not a parameter that was significantly different from zero, and therefore if we set it to zero, the chi-square does not decline, or it does not increase significantly, and doesn't show a decline in model fit because that parameter is not needed, and the means can be set equal without a loss in fit. You can see that constraint then implies that the estimated factor means are exactly the same, and they have exactly the same standard error and the same Z statistic. Now those means are significantly different from zero, however the difference between them is not. And so we can set them equal without um, losing model fit. And then obviously the parameter that is newly defined then is zero because we set it to zero, so that is trivial. So I hope you found this useful to learn a little bit more about the possibilities with the model constraint option in M+. It's a very flexible, very useful method when you define new parameters or when you want to implement complex constraints in a structural equation model or factor model that you cannot just simply put into the model statement in terms of equality constraints. So <clears throat> this option is useful to know about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel and check out the description for more videos and workshops. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have other topics that you would like to see discussed and I'll see you next time.